Hi, everyone, welcome to my channel again. Today, I am going to share the process capability 6-pack normal using Minitab. Before watching, please like, comment and subscribe to my channel. Process capability is a measure of the ability of a process to meet customer specification. Process capability is defined as a statistical measure of the inherent process variability of a given characteristic. Process capability studies can indicate the degree to which the output meets customer's specifications. Be used for comparison with another process or competitor. Provide current level of process performance at measure phase. Provide the measure of gains after the improvements are in place at control phase. Let's take an example. A coating manufacturer coats the outside of the metal surface to maintain strength. The lower and upper specification of dry film thickness is 9 and 10 mils respectively. Operator randomly selects 6 cable samples for every 8 hours. Next, I am going to show you the steps of performing a process capability 6-pack study based on a normal method using Minitab software. Select STAT, Quality Tools, Capability 6-pack, Normal. Complete the following steps to specify the data for your graph. In a single column, enter thickness. In subgroup size, enter groupings. In lower spec, enter 9. In upper spec, enter 10. Click OK. Here is the process capability 6-pack graph. Before performing process capability study, verify the four assumptions. The first assumption is the process is statistically stable. To confirm process stability, validate through control charts such as XBAR R, XBAR S chart and others. The second assumption is that the individual measurement from the process conforms to the normal distribution. To confirm normality, validate through a normal probability plot. The third assumption is that the engineering specifications represent customer needs. To confirm engineering specification, validate through engineering drawings and customer contracts. The last assumption is measurement variation is relatively small. To confirm measurement variation, validate through MSA, Measurement System Analysis Study. To understand more about measurement system analysis, you can watch my two videos about accuracy and precision and how to perform GR and R using Minitab software. On both the X-bar chart and the R chart, the points are randomly distributed between the control limits, implying a stable process. The points on the chart of the last 25 subgroups make a random horizontal scatter, with no trends or shifts, which also indicates process stability. On the normal probability plot, the points approximately follow a straight line and fall within the 95% confidence interval. These patterns indicate that the data are normally distributed. The capability plot provides the capability estimate, you can see that. The interval for the overall process variation is wider than the interval for the specification limits. This means you will sometimes see coating thickness outside the tolerance limit 9, 10. Next, I will guide you to plot process capability plot. Choose STAT, Quality Tools, Capability Analysis, Normal. In the single column, enter thickness. In subgroup size, enter groupings. In lower spec, enter 9. In upper spec, enter 10. Click OK in each dialog box. This is the process capability report for thickness. I will spend some time explaining potential capability and overall capability. There are two measures of process capability which are potential capability, represented by CP and CPK, and overall capability which is represented by PP and PPK. Potential capability only accounts for the variation within the subgroups while overall capability accounts for the overall variation of all measurements taken. The calculations for CP and PP are similar. The key difference between the two sets of indices lies in the estimates for within standard deviation and overall standard deviation. The CP-PP index compares the allowable spread USL minus LSL against the process spread Six Sigma. It fails to take into account if the process is centered between the specification limits. 
The CPK PPK evaluates process capability by comparing the process center to the closer specification limit. You can see that the process mean 9.82186 is slightly short of the target 9.5. And both the tails of the distribution fall outside the specification limits. The CPK and PPK index is 0.19 and 0.16 respectively, which is less than 1.00, indicating that the manufacturer must improve the process by reducing variability and centering the process on the target. The PPM total observed performance is the number of parts per million whose characteristic of interest is outside the tolerance limits. This means that approximately 313,333 out of 1 million parts do not meet the specifications. What is the difference between CPK and PPK? CPK is known as short-term capability while PPK is long-term capability. CPK only accounts for the variation within the subgroups while PPK accounts for the overall variation of all measurements taken. Short-term capability consists of variation due to common cause while long-term capability consists of variation due to common and special cause. CPK does not account for the shift and drift between subgroups while PPK theoretically includes both the variation within subgroups and also the shift and drift between them. For short-term capability, Data is collected across a narrow inference space while data from long-term capability is taken across a broad inference space. In summary, the process appears to be stable, but many measurements fall outside the specification limits. Control chart is not the correct tool to determine if the customer's requirement is met, because it is only used to monitor the performance of production processes in progress, and an in-control process does not necessarily mean that all the products meet the customer's requirement. The process mean needs to be shifted and the variation reduced to meet customer requirements. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe to my channel. Bye. See you next time.